Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Zachariah Connor, and I'm a guitarist from Corvallis, Oregon. And uh, yeah, I love playing guitar and love gear and love talking about it. So I uh, figured I might as well start a YouTube channel and finally live my dream of becoming a t guitar YouTuber who doesn't play in front of people in real life. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show um, a few of my some of my gear and you know share some resources that might be able to help some people out. So um, today is a great day. I just got this guitar yesterday, and that makes me really excited because it's really awesome. So what is it? Um, this is a Gretsch Electromatic G fifty four twenty two TG, um, and what that means it's a lot of words and numbers. Um, uh, it's a very long, beautiful name. <laughs> Uh, but basically, um, what all of that means is that this is a lower price Gretsch model, so it's a little bit more affordable than their professional or vintage line, um, but you still get a lot of the great Gretsch sound and features. Um, but yeah, the G stands for gold, which you can see it has gold hardware everywhere. It's very blingy looking, but I kind of love it. Um, it's kind of nice. The T stands for tremolo, which it has a Bigsby vibrato system. Thanks, Leo Fender, for screwing that up. Um, yeah, this guitar is a fully hollow um, guitar. It's about like two inches thick-ish. It's fully hollow, um, which is nice because it's loud acoustically. <laughs> it's like an acoustic guitar with a whammy bar. <laughs> Now, um, to prevent it from feeling flimsy, it is constructed of seven ply plywood, I believe, five or seven ply. So top, back, and sides are seven ply plywood with um, maple, birch, or poplar, or some combination of some of those woods. And then there's also bracing. So there's two big braces, the Gretsch truss brace system. So there's two um, about this inch thick pieces of wood that run underneath the pickup screws and the bridge and the Bigsby to kind of keep the top from caving in and give it some um, support. So this guitar feels really sturdy. I have another hollow body that's a uh, Tysco from the 60s and that guitar feels really flimsy. You can pull it out of tune just by doing this to it, but this guitar feels solid as a rock. There's also a rod, wooden rod that runs, that goes from the underneath the bridge on the top here and connects to the back to kind of um, add some more stability and rigidity and help reduce feedback too. Again, it is fully hollow, so um, we'll get to how loud can you get before feedback, but basically it will feedback if you have enough gain, even at bedroom volume. Using it live in like a heavy, if you play heavy metal, using this live probably wouldn't be a good idea. They have center block versions, which have like a big piece of wood that completely blocks off the air from going from one side to the other, and that quells a lot of the feedback. So look into one of those if you want a Gretsch sound and vibe, but you want um, a little bit more high gain before feedback. Um, but I'm kind of excited for the feedback, honestly, because this is nice to be able to get some feedback at lower volumes where it's not going to annoy my neighbors or anything like that. Um, yeah, it has the Gretsch 24.6 inch scale length, which is a little bit shorter than Gibson's 24.75 and quite a bit shorter than Fender's 25.5 um, inch scale length. So it's about an inch shorter. It doesn't really feel that much shorter than um, a Fender. Um, doesn't feel that much shorter, so I don't really feel cramped on it. If you play a Fender Jaguar, which has a 24 inch scale or a Mustang, I kind of feel cramped on those, but this guitar I don't really feel that way. So that's good news. Um, it's got medium jumbo frets, are a little bit wider and sh and uh, lower than I like, but I, you know, they're not bad. And it's got a rosewood fretboard, which is really nice and oiled up. That's really good. Um, I got this guitar from Five Star Guitars, which is a local dealer in Beaverton, Oregon, um, kind of where I'm from originally where I grew up and uh, yeah it was cool to be able to support a local vendor and get a good deal on a guitar so yeah um, <clears throat> so they they took care of this thing pretty well I think it was probably out on the showroom floor so there's a slight ding by this tuner um, but other than that you know it's not it's not in bad shape at all I, I really like how good of a condition this thing is in um, there are some issues with this guitar, which I'll get into, but they're not deal breakers by any means. Um, yeah, so let's talk about um, kind of the hardware. So we have two Gretsch uh, designed and built um, blacktop filter trons. These pickups are humbucking, mini humbucking pickups 
They're a lot like Gretsch Fultertrons and other guitars. They're pretty low output, um, but they sound really incredible. They got this real sparkle to the top end, and they still got some mid girth to them. Um, they're definitely not as powerful as like a Les Paul or something like that. I had compared my roommate's Les Paul to this thing last night, and that Les Paul is so much more output. But um, you know, this thing isn't about high output. Um, and these pickups really, really shine. It's about similar output to like my Tele and my Jazzmaster. So if you're wondering kind of what your rig setup change will have to be, you'll probably, if you play high out, higher output Gibson humbuckers, you might want to think about having some kind of boost um, to turn on for this guitar. Um, the, there are a lot of knobs on this guitar and there's only two pickups. Um, so you might be wondering, is it a Gibson layout with two volume, two tone? Uh, no. So there's two volumes, one tone, and then a master volume. So the master volume has a treble bleed on it too to help retain that high end when you roll it back, which is really handy, uh, especially on a humbucker guitar. Um, there's a tone knob, and then neck, and then bridge pickup volume. So that's kind of nice. They're spaced out enough to where it's like easy to remember, but I'm probably ne never gonna touch these for the most part. Like, I don't really wanna turn these down. Um, just, I'll use this or my volume pedal really turned down. Uh, Three-way switch up here. Yeah, it's got the hump block inlays, rosewood fretboard. It's bound, double bound on, or it's black, white, black, white, black, white uh, binding on the top and on the back, which is really sick looking. That's an upgrade that Gretsch did in 2016. Um, so they also removed the Electromatic logo from there, put it down here. So it looks a little bit classier, added binding on the headstock too. Um, they've got these open gear tuners, which are all right. Um, I think the tuners aren't that bad. I think the nut, people have had issues with the nut end. Um, just from having this guitar for a day, it definitely needs some, needs some graphite up there. It needs some lube um, or a bone nut. So I think uh, someday I'll upgrade to a bone nut and, uh, or a tusk nut and make sure to lube it up at least. Um, it's currently set up with, I believe these are feels like 10s or 11s. I think they're 11s. But yeah, the bridge is also pinned, so the bridge can't move on old school Gretsch's. You, the, they wouldn't have any adjustable saddles, it would just have a bar with grooves in it, and you would literally adjust the intonation by loosening the strings and then moving the bridge around until you got the intonation right, um, which is really sketch, especially because if you play really hard, you could knock the bridge out of place. But this bridge is pinned, so it can't move back and forth. Um, you can, it'll pop out when you take off the strings, but other than that, it doesn't move, go anywhere. Bigsby is really nice. Um, I love the Bigsby. It's just such a great feeling, um, vibrato system. If you like doing little, like, wiggles and, you know, and stuff like that with chords or with notes, this is great. If you want to do, um, dive bombs, get a guitar with a Floyd Rose, you already know. Um, this is not a string through, so this is the old school type with the little pegs that you have to hook the ball of the string on and then wrap it around. So that's probably going to be challenging when I replace the strings. I haven't done that yet. Um, the bridge is a tunematic. Sorry, I'm going in circles here. Tunematic style bridge. Um, it looks fine. Um, some people do roller saddles on these, but um, with the trim usage, the bridge kind of rocks back and forth and I don't really see the need to do roller saddles. It might help a little bit with tuning stability, but I don't see, first see it being a, a huge driver in that. It's mostly the nut that's the problem. So. It also has the cool Gretsch strap locks, so you just unscrew these guys and then you can put your strap on and then screw these back in and it'll kind of hold your strap in place a little more securely than a normal button would because they're pretty big and chunky. Um, I don't think there's much else to say about this. It looks stellar. It plays well. Um, um, I'll definitely need to teach tweak the truss rod a tiny bit. There's a bit of neck bow, but it's not bad. Um, overall, the action's pretty playable and kind of a nice um, medium height um, as it came from 5 Star. So shout out to 5 Star for doing a good setup on this. I'm gonna tweak the truss rod a tiny bit, maybe lower the bridge a tiny bit, but overall it doesn't buzz. Um, it doesn't buzz at all um, and doesn't fret out. All the notes ring true. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, this is like kind of a mid-price Gretsch. This is, it retails for $1,000 new. You can pick some up for seven or 800 used. They hold their value pretty well. Don't really see them coming down below that. 
especially these double bound ones, um, the later later models. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this is a great guitar if you want to play praise and worship music. Um, it kind of is that sound already. Um, it's great for if you like to play ambient music or rockabilly um, or kind of indie music, indie or alternative music, it's great for that stuff. You can even play, um, you know, rock stuff, classic rock stuff on it. Obviously nothing too loud or too high gain, but um, nowadays with everyone doing modelers and stuff, you don't have to worry about feedback as much with this guitar. So yeah, it looks stellar, it sounds great, and um, I'll let you guys hear it now. So um, we're running into my pedal board today cable into my pedal board we have the two notes audio engineering torpedo cab m running a 606 um, power amp simulation into a rev 2 1 by 12 cab the sure sm7b and another mic simulated mic in there um, delay and reverb from boss re 500 and dd 500 overdrive from the jhs morning glory version 4 i'll turn on the exotic effects sp compressor um, later. So we'll start with just um, a little bit of boost into the amp to compensate for the volume. So um, let's start on the neck pickup. There's only three positions today, so it's a little bit simpler than that seven position strat I have. Okay, um, and yeah, it's running stereo out of the uh, um, delay and reverb into Cubase Elements 10, and uh, yeah, um, let's let's give it a let's give it a shot. Um, neck pickup. Here we go. Oh, and there's no post-processing. I'm not doing any EQ or compression or reverb or anything after the pedal board, so. Compressor is on. Drive on.
can see, it's kind of comfortable playing a lot of different styles of music. It can do the ambient, cool stuff, and it can do some rock stuff. Let's see how much um, volume we can do before feedback. <clears throat> I'll just turn up my studio monitors here. I have kicked on the Walrus 385, as well as the JHS Morning Glory in the high gain mode, and let's see what happens. <laughs> Um, so that's nice. Um, I'll maybe I'll demo that more. Let's try. Let's try something else. Um, turning on my JJS Cran. Um, it's kind of a fuzz sound. So. That's been a cool look at this guitar. Um, if you're interested in kind of hearing a comparison of these guitars, I'm gonna do a just a shootout where I run all of them back to back to back. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. So like and subscribe for um, more videos of my guitars and my friends' guitars. Um, and feel free to subscribe. I probably already said that. Follow me on Instagram if you want um, and Facebook too. Um, follow my bands. The Morning Tide on YouTube and Makeshift Casual on YouTube as well as Instagram. Thank you guys. Stay safe during uh, the COVID-19 thing and I'll see you guys in a later video.